Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, a recent arrest in Pike County put one couple behind bars, leading to the end of their jobs as teachers in the school district. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the arrest. The Pikeville Police Department responded to two different drug related traffic incidents within about six hours earlier this week, arresting two teachers in Pike County, one of them twice. Officers say Joshua Priest was first arrested Tuesday just before 6 p.m. Charged with operating a vehicle under the influence of a controlled substance, no registration receipt, and no registration plates. They say he was released from jail later that night and arrested again at around 12 a.m. with his wife Suzanne when calls came in about a vehicle parked in one of the lanes at the Stone Coal intersection. Officers observed both passed out in the vehicle. Um, Officers put in their citation that they observed the vehicle was running and was in drive. Pike County School Superintendent Dr. Reed Adkins says as soon as the district was notified, they set up a meeting with the priests. And this morning, Joshua resigned while Suzanne was relieved of her duties pending further investigation. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. Joshua was a teacher at Pike Central High School and Suzanne was a middle school teacher at Kemper Elementary. The economy took a hit due to the COVID-19 pandemic, certainly, and now local businesses are struggling to meet the demands of customers. Not only are supplies hard to get and keep in stock, but business owners are facing a surge in prices for materials they've been using for years. H&D Heating Supply and Hazard is one of those businesses, and so they say the problem is likely not going away anytime soon. No win situation there. It's just a lot of shortage. Equipment has been slow getting. Uh, there's some brands of the equipment that just can't get right now. It's going to be tremendously back ordered until January or February possibly. We'll hear more later from Nichols and another business suffering from supply shortages in our area tonight at 6. In his Team Kentucky update today, Governor Bashir painted a bright picture of Kentucky's economic future, mentioning major projects like App Harvest in eastern Kentucky, a paper mill in western Kentucky, and a community wellness facility in Boyle County, all as job creators and economic drivers throughout the state. He also highlighted the major announcement earlier this week from Ford that many of the batteries to power their future electric vehicles will be built right here in the bluegrass. We set out to build what we believe are the largest electric vehicle battery plants in the country right off I-65 in Hardin County. The plants represent a $5.8 billion investment that's expected to create 5,000 new jobs. Well, we've continued to see the beautiful sunshine out there this afternoon. That makes four work days in a row and about a week straight of beautiful weather out there, save for a few showers last weekend. UVA Wise camera showing, okay, we've seen a few extra clouds throughout the region today, but they haven't been hurting temperatures much at all. Taking an I-75 at Mount Vernon, you actually see more blue sky there than we were dealing with at Wise. So we're actually in pretty good shape out there this afternoon. Temperatures, just like the past few afternoons, Cumberland Valley warmer into those low 80s, upper 70s places like Hazard into Jackson as well. Slightly cooler with a few more clouds over in the Big Sandy with those temperatures in the mid-70s at this hour. You see some of those clouds working through places like Lawrence, Martin, and Pike counties into parts of Wayne, Mingo, and Logan counties in West Virginia. And a few more clouds trying to work into the Cumberland Valley, but not quite there yet, except for the far southwest reaches of Wayne County, Kentucky, that is. Outside, keep that WYMT weather app handy because we're going to get cool quick once the sun goes down tonight. 60 by 1 o'clock and then down into the upper to middle 50s for lows again tonight. We've got at least one more day of beautiful sunshine to go before some changes make their way into the forecast. And I'll have those details coming up in just a minute. Steve? Evan, thank you. Memphis police say they have a suspect in custody after a student was shot at an elementary school in West Tennessee today. Investigators say a 13-year-old was shot at Cummings Elementary School in Memphis this morning. The victim was rushed to the hospital and is in critical condition. Police say the suspect turned himself into officers at a nearby precinct. They have not identified him, but say he is a juvenile. The school has been placed on lockdown and parents were notified to pick up their children at a nearby church. As the debate surrounding vaccine mandates continues, attention turns to what could be the next battle 
the airline industry. Airlines are stepping up the pressure on staff to get vaccinated, but a small minority of pilots and crews are refusing. That could mean new travel delays for passengers. CBS's Errol Barnett has more. As people start making holiday travel plans, pilot unions are warning that staff shortages could scramble family vacations when the federal vaccine mandate takes effect. How could holiday travel be negatively impacted by a vaccine mandate? Well, if in fact the pilots who are not vaccinated are uh, uh, put on unpaid leave or, or terminated, uh, that's more than 4,000 pilots at American Airlines that will not be able to fly. Captain Dennis Tager is spokesperson for the Allied Pilots Association and its 15,000 American Airlines pilots. Its vaccination rate is higher than the national average, but Tager says that leaves over 4,000 of their pilots holding out. If indeed the executive order for the mandate on vaccines hits, it'll hit right in the December time frame. So both APA and Southwest's Airline Pilot Association are asking for exemptions before President Biden's executive order mandating vaccines takes hold. To vaccinate or to not vaccinate. Transport Workers Union Local 514 President Dale Danka voiced his resistance to the rule. I just don't think the government ought to give a company the right to violate the privacy between you and your doctor and, and your personal health. This comes as the termination process begins for almost 600 United Airlines staff who refuse to comply with its mandate. That number is dwarfed by the more than 66,000 who are vaccinated. American Airlines CEO Doug Parker is pleading with his staff, but not requiring them to do the same. Please go get vaccinated uh, now before the end of this month, because we're all going to get vaccinated before too long, one way or the other. Now, we should note both Teja and Danka are fully vaccinated themselves. They just disagree with across-the-board government mandates. But the data on this is clear. When airlines like United initiate their own across-the-board vaccine mandate, it works. Errol Barnett, CBS News at Reagan National Airport. Well, there was a crazy scene at Miami's airport. A flight from Columbia had just landed and was pulling up to the gate Wednesday night when a guy named Christian Segura got out through an emergency exit and started walking on the wing of the plane. As soon as police got there, the 33-year-old American citizen jumped off the wing and was detained. Now officials are trying to figure out who's going to take the lead on what to do with him. Well, now's the time to book your Thanksgiving and Christmas getaways if you haven't already. Expedia has released its holiday travel forecast. According to the travel website, popular destinations this year include beaches in Mexico and the mountains in Utah and Colorado. Expedia says flexibility is key when it comes to holiday travel. They say avoid flying on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, December 23rd and December 28th because they are often the busiest and most expensive dates. Walmart is on the hunt for workers ahead of the holidays. The retail giant says it is planning to hire 150,000 new associates for stores across the U.S. Most will be for permanent full-time positions. Walmart has increased its pay to attract more employees during the labor shortage. The average hourly wage is now $16.40. Some positions pay as much as $34 an hour. Walmart also previously announced it was looking to hire 20,000 warehouse employees. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Thursday. A rough one today. The Dow closes down more than 546 points. We'll have more financial news coming up in our next half hour. When your DIY project turns into a disaster, many times you only have yourself to blame. Or that's what a new one poll survey found, saying two in five Americans have experienced more home project fails than successes. Nearly half said they botched a project by not asking for professional help, and even more wish they could start from scratch with an expert on hand. Coming up on First and Four, as wildfires become an increasingly common part of some people's lives, Google is working to help people track them. And sunshine continues to be our dominant weather feature. For a couple more days, I'll have the latest on that coming up.